Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar here uh, together with Jerne Wittmar from Modeler. Um, Jerne, welcome. Um, we have a presentation here prepared for you today uh, as I see people rolling in from, uh, from all, uh, all across the world. Um, it would be nice to just have a quick update in the chat that everyone can hear us okay. I see Ava saying hi, but uh, maybe Ava is also able to reply that you can hear us okay. Still fairly quiet. <laughs> yeah, okay, we hear uh, yeah. we get some feedback that you guys are hearing us. Um, let me get started without any further ado. Um, there's uh, almost 200 people that uh, have registered for the webinar today. Um, we uh, all we welcome you very much. Um, uh, let's get started with our brief presentation on how to effectively create, experience, and communicate an urban design. My name is Lawrence Koch from Server, uh, responsible for all, all our sales activities. Um, we uh, have here our next sheet on the topics for today. Uh, we're gonna run through this in a presentation of about 30 minutes and then have some room for, uh, for questions to, uh, to answer. Uh, feel free to use the chat for, for questions. We try to group them a little bit and, uh, and answer them as good as we can for now. Uh, the topics will be on how to effectively match an urban design to urban planning regulations, how Modeler uh, is helping you design to be compliant, uh, the importance of the model and data accessibility in 3D, obviously the, the hustle of securing access for your design and how you can do that best. And then as uh, our joint solutions found each other and how you can use the power of Modeler and Suver uh, and in the end, experience and communicate an urban design. Uh, and at the very end, we will have a very special offer for you. Um, without further ado, just a brief introduction on Server. Server is a, a web solution uh, that enables anyone that uses SketchUp, Revit, Archicad, or um, <clears throat> uh, FBX IFC files. Uh, to quickly turn it into a web version of the model and experience it with an avatar to walk around and create instant walkthroughs and online collaboration to experience and explain a model very clearly and effectively online. Um, and uh, we do that in 173 countries uh, with two offices, one based in Holland, in Ulvaut, and one based in Moldova, Chisinau. Um, total of more than 25 people. We continue to, uh, to work very hard on creating very good design experiences. So that, um, that's a brief introduction on Suva. I think you all just want to see what we do. Um, I give the word to Yane uh, to do a brief introduction on Mahler and the basics, and then uh, we move into the live session. Thank you, Lawrence. Um, uh, so a bit about me, I'm Jerne Widmar, I'm CEO and co-founder of Agility, a company behind Modeler. By education, I'm an urban designer, but uh, for the last few years, I've been working on uh, Modeler. Before that, I was working as an architect and urban designer in practice. And what Modeler is, what we are going to show you today, it's a SketchUp extension for urban design. It's a parametric urban design tool that allows you to work three to five times faster, having the ability to quickly model the development and have the numbers available at the same time in real time as you design. And now without any further ado, let me switch over to the presentation. So I'll quickly show you some of the basic functionalities of Modeler. I'll just go here to share my screen. Lawrence, can you confirm you can see it? Yeah, I see it fine. Okay, so as I mentioned, Modeler is an urban design extension for SketchUp, uh, meaning that you need to install it on top of SketchUp. The easiest way of doing it is through extension warehouse, where you can just open the window, type in Modeler, 
and it will bring up the result to install Modeler. Uh, we have a special offer for attendees of this webinar. So after the webinar is uh, finished, please reach out to us. You will see the, the email address. Please reach out to us and we will provide you with a, with a demo so you can try the uh, modeler on, uh, on your own. Or alternatively, you can also go to our website and download modeler from there. So once modeler is installed, this is the toolbar that you will, you will see. And you first need to click on this blue modeler icon, which will bring up the uh, user interface. As you can see in this model, we have some gray buildings, some contextual model. These are just the geometric geometric models that uh, serve the purpose of, of the context to see the scale of the space. But the colored buildings that you see are actually parametric modeler buildings, meaning that they have also some data attached to it and they behave uh, in a bit smart way. So first thing that I want to, to do today is I want to create a tower on top of this building here. To do so, I'll just uh, create a face here on, on this building. And now when the face is done, uh, I'll just click on the create building button. What this will do is it will create a building based on some predefined parameters, the default parameters of modeler, which is a four story uh, residential building. Now, since Modeler is completely integrated with SketchUp, I can use its built-in tools. So in this case, I'll just go to Scale Tool, scale this building a bit up to, let's say, to something like this. And as you can see, as I release the button, Modeler will, recre will recreate the building, adding stories to it. Uh, the other way of doing this kind of operation is through the user interface where I can just quickly type in the number of how much stories I want to have, and it will adapt the buildings. Now, this is in terms of, of model or SketchUp, it's just a simple building which only has one use assigned to it. Another thing that you can do here is you can combine such di different buildings with different uses into what we call complex building or uh, what is more known as mixed use building. So, to, do, uh, to create a mixed-use building, you just select those buildings that you want to put together and click on the third button here, which is Create Complex Building. What this will do is it will create a group of such uh, simple buildings. Now, I can also enter this group and just modify its part. So if I want to change this one to be maybe just three stories high, um, you can see that the upper part adapts to it. What I can also do is I can change, for example, uh, uses of these different buildings to do so. Let's say in this part, I actually want, instead of making it residential, I want to have a hotel here. So I can change it and it will change the color, but it will also change the, the calculations behind it. Now, talking about the calculations, we haven't seen much data here yet. So there are a few options on how you can uh, see the data about what you are designing. The most convenient ones when, when you start designing is the one that you can find under the survey, which is urban control survey on screen. In here, you can select different options of how you want to display the data about your model. Uh, the text appears here, uh, appears here in the upper left corner. And sometimes this is a tip. If it's garbled, this is just the text of SketchUp which you can change. You can go to uh, Entity Info and change the text here. I'll make it bold and a bit larger so that it's easier to read. I've just went here to the Entity Info of layout. Uh, now, whenever I click on a building, I can see the data related to the building that is in my selection. And if I go from basic to full, I can sh show even some more data. So. In case of simple buildings, I can see the number of apartments also and residents in case of residential building. But if I switch this building, for example, to let's say uh, um, maybe service, you will see that numbers are changed. They are changed to offices and employees. So based on the use that I have assigned to buildings, different numbers appear out of uh, or are calculated for, for the model. Now, we also can see the data about the city blocks. 
which is a bit different. I'll go here to full. Uh, you can see that in this case, we have two city blocks. Um, and for this city block, the achieved floor area ratio, or sometimes called floor space index, is 1.2, site coverage is 30%, and so on. We also see what is the parking space deficit and other key urban parameters. And the last one that we have here is also the survey of plot area, which shows me the data about my complete model. So in total, in this model that we are seeing now, we have 20% almost of condominium uses, 8% is the hotel, 52 residential, and 20% of service. Now, this is one way of showing the data. What I can also do maybe before continuing is I'm just seeing that I lack 724 parking spaces. And just what a, I would, just a second, uh, yeah. Yeah, let me break in a little bit. Uh, yeah. I see some people entering the chat as uh, asking mm -hmm. whether uh, the sound got lost. Um, I can hear you fine, but uh, just to make sure that everybody's hearing us okay, um, yeah. maybe if you if you hear us, please yeah. uh, drop something in the chat that uh, you hear us okay. Okay, we lost sound. Okay, Peter, I see the sound is not for Peter. Anyone else besides Peter having a problem with sound? No, it sounds like uh, other people are uh, are okay. So, okay. Uh, let's Please. just uh, continue. Um, the screen you're sharing is really yeah. uh, <laughs> duplicating yeah. a lot of So yeah. let's just okay. uh, keep going. All right. Good. Okay. So, uh, Peter, if, if it doesn't work, Otherwise, you can always uh, see the recording of this webinar. It will be published after we finish. Yes. Or maybe try to reconnect right now. Um, in any case, so we see that now we are lacking 700 and almost 730 parking spaces. So I want to check what size of the garage we would need to provide to have enough parking spaces for this whole development. So what I'll do is I will select this building here and I will actually go and convert it to parking. It will change the color, and you can see that the, the numbers are instantly getting closer to zero, but we are still not there yet. So I need to, to make this garage a bit higher. Maybe let's try with this height. And obviously, um, now we have 110 parking spaces more than needed, but maybe this is not the best space where we would want to place the garage. So what I can also do is I can just grab it and maybe put it underground and then work on this garage as a maybe three-story garage that spans over both of the, the city blocks. So let me just go here, try to move it to this location so that it fits better and then maybe expand it some more. Um, sorry. Let's go here, scale it up to let's say this location. So until I find the, the appropriate size of the garage that provides enough parking spaces. Actually, this one is a quite good fit, 35 parking spaces more than needed. So uh, as I mentioned before, this is just one way of seeing the data. What you can also do is go to Tools, Open Urban Control Data Table. And what this will do is it will actually show you the data about your complete model. So this is uh, kind of integrated with SketchUp, uh, meaning that you can, for example, sort the buildings by height. And then as you click the building here, it gets marked in, in, the, uh, in, in this table, but it also gets selected in your in your uh, 3D view window. So, or if I go here and select this building, I can always see to which city block and to which, uh, and which is the building or the data related to, to this building. Now, the last thing that I want to show you in this respect maybe is the ability to connect this model directly to Excel. To do so, you can go to extensions, modeler, and send modeler data to Excel. What this will do is it will open up an Excel file that you can see it. this Excel file has the same name as your SketchUp file. This is because Modeler created 
an Excel file next to your SketchUp file, giving it the same name so that at some later point when when you close your model and then if you want to work on it sometime later, you can just return to it, re reignite this connection and have the data being pushed to Excel. Now, the interesting part here is not just having the data as an Excel file. It looks pretty much the same as what you've seen in, in the embedded window. But what's going on here is that this model is actually connected to to uh, a modeler or so the the modeler is connected to excel meaning that whenever you change something the data in excel is being updated what i have already prepared in advance is additional sheet that pulls this data from excel uh, uh from from uh, from what's coming in through modeler to the sheet where where i've added some calculations to get a better approximation of the investment and some graphs that show me what's going on with my model. So I can just go here, maybe scale this building. And as you can see here, let me just maybe this way, it will be a bit easier. I'll go on and change this building to six stories. And as you can see, the data is constantly being pushed to Excel. So when I change this one to 15 stories, all the data, is sent to Excel, meaning that I can add my own formulas here uh, and see how it affects, how, how the change of the model affects the numbers that are coming out of it. Now, the last, the, the last thing that I want to show you here is also about the compliance, something that uh, Lawrence already mentioned, because in the end, all this work that you do with urban design, it's not much of use if it's not compliant with the rules of the city. What we have here is now I have exceeded at least one of the basic rules of the city, and this is why my city block became red. Now, I need to make sure that this city block will not be red, otherwise I know that this kind of building is not possible in this part of the city. To check what is wrong with my model, I can go to the city block, and in here, I see that permitted building height became red because the limitation of this city block is 55 meters, but my building is 62 meters high. So what I need to do is I need to change the height. And now the city block is not red anymore, meaning that this building is now compliant, at least when it comes to the height limitation, to the floor area and site coverage of this city block. Now. This was a basic introduction of how Modeler works, what it does, and how it can help you with designing of cities. Now, partnering with Xuver, we have created an additional extension to Modeler, which is the Xuver preparation tool. And what this does is it prepares your Modeler model in a way that, that is instantly usable with Xuver. The only thing that you need to do to, to um, to trigger it, you need to go to extensions. And here you will find, once you install it, and uh, please reach out to us after the call and we will provide you with this extension so that you can try it out on your own. And once you install it, uh, you will add a new entry here under extensions, prepare modeler for Xuver. Uh, once you click this one, it will ask you if you want to save your model before it converts it to Xuver because at the moment uh, it, it uh, changes modular model so that it will not be usable anymore. So what it, it offers here is uh, it can save your file so that you can, you can keep on working for, on it at some point later. In this case, I'll just go with yes. So my original file is stored and then it creates the, the Xuver based model. So in this case, you will see these floors are added and information is attached to, to the buildings. So let me just check here. I can see that the Xuver info is here. So just making sure that this data about the buildings that I have created will be passed on to Xuver. Now, the model is already uh, prepared and you can see that we have added an extension to the file name. This is just to prevent that your original model or model is overloaded. We create a separate file made just for, for Xuver. And now the only thing that you need to do is you need to run Xuver. 
uh, at the moment it's a it's a separate program but i believe that soon it will be integrated with uh xuver's extension for sketchup and now what i'll do here is i'll just drag this sketchup file to xuver and convert save and that's about it my file for xuver is being prepared and as you can see here we have a new xuver file now the last thing that i want to do here is i want to go create a new pro uh, project in xuver and here i'll just drag it to xuver here modeler test test i believe it's two next and i'll make it public now next and we are ready to to view it let me go here i'll also pass this link to lawrence here so that you can so that he can he can show you uh how to work with xuver here we can see that there is data now related also when i click on the buildings you can see the data about them now please lawrence uh take it from here uh lawrence lawrence audio is off i uh yeah excuse me <laughs> i just uh i just saw it appearing in the chat i yeah. muted myself to make sure that we uh got all the sound okay yeah. um excuse me i'll continue from here um uh what i was saying is that to make sure that you all have the right information uh available it's not necessarily uh accessible for everyone so what we saw, and that's why we joined our forces, is because uh, there's a lot of times where people can actually uh, benefit from the data from the modeler model, but uh, do not have access to SketchUp or are not allowed to install anything or uh, want to publish it on a website. They don't want to share the original model. They want, don't want other people to access it or changes. And that's why me and Yone uh, got together and and thought out the solution together that we definitely want to want to inform you about. So um, let me share my screen as um, Yerene sent me the link in Skype. So it, um, all he did was just copy the URL of the project that he created in Suver. And here we go. So he did the modeler test two. It's a simple URL. All I did was click on there and it's automatic. It starts loading. We get information on how to control it with game controls on the project instantly. And um, I go to the starting point. I have my avatar. And as you see, I have my personal avatar, which is actually a scan. And I can just simply walk through his original model. And here we are, I get a feel for the information, I get a feel for the design, I get a feel for everything that is included. I can now just click on the building and have access to all the data that's originated in Modeler. So here I have the building name, I have the gross floor area, I have the build-up area, I have the number of stories, uh, required parking spaces, everything. Um, if you... Once you get a feel for the entire situation, you can run with the shift combination and just access anything anywhere. Uh, there are some trees available within Modeler. Uh, I'm right, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got a library for this? Yes, we do. Although these are not, these trees that we see here, these are replacement because these are actually 3D trees. The library that comes with Modeler is 2D trees. 
Okay. Because it's it's a very lightweight library. Sometimes yeah. users need to add thousands of trees. Okay, so this is a way to experience the model. But the true power of Suver is actually within the collaboration. So what I want to do here is I want to share this. So uh, Yane, please access the model uh, through the URL that you shared with mm -hmm. me. Um, we have a collaboration solution that I can change my camera views. Um, I can do an eye view which is at a uh, meter 70, I believe, for the avatars. Um, we can go to fly through view and have an experience for the, the total model. And obviously still all the data from every single mod, uh, single volume is here available. Uh, as you say, see a change, uh, I'll just automate it in the conversion that we built together. Um, now I wanna go back and there's a microphone integration have you joined Yerne? yes i'm i'm here near the benches and let's go and uh, see where yoni is uh, i see his avatar here and uh, he could maybe you can walk a little bit so people can actually see that um, we do have a live connection yeah i'm moving away towards the road now and there may there may be a little bit of a lag but um, what we do here is just a quick collaboration of tools to laser point, uh, whatever object we're talking about. Um, I can have some measurement tools to measure. Um, let me get away from the data. So there's 10 meters. Um, we have a mini map to see the entire urban plan. And it is a live connection as we move around. And there's options to take a quick screenshot, for example, and add it for a note, which uh, happens a lot. Um, we have uh, different ways of using this. Uh, so there's a screenshot that creates a JPEG that can just simply copy or uh, just use your copy paste solution uh, that you use for yourself. Oh, wait. Um, here we go. Uh, create this, the quick screenshot, just copy it in here, and I can, for example, just drop it instantly, adding a simple note, and collaborate like that. Um, oh, just lost it. There we go. Um, another option is to cut plane. Now we have here are cutting plane. So you set the edges on all the axes. Uh, for example, this time it's a ZX. Uh, I would definitely recommend to turn off the avatar for these uh, type of actions. Um, then we well, cut plane. It's turned on and just a right click and we can instantly have our cutting plane. Now uh, we can adjust it here if you like and move it in whatever direction you prefer at the exact degree angle that you want. Then the layer structures are here. So there's city blocks. Let me just zoom out a little bit so you get a better feel for it. So here we have the location snapshot. Okay, we have the import. Uh, yeah, no, you're the designer in, uh, of the two of us. so. Uh, Maybe we need to. Where did you? Maybe if if you want, just you you can maybe turn right. off and so, on the uh, existing Middle buildings. Middle. Existing buildings. Yeah. To really select and get your story straight now. Now this is a very powerful way to actually collaborate with different parties involved. Uh, for example, if you you are in need to do a quick collaboration or quick checkup with somebody. It, it's really nice to have these this quick and easy access with just a URL. Uh, as you saw, it only takes about a minute to create and then move on from there. Uh, then there's shelter sharing. Um, we, we can also just embed this on your own personal website. So uh, as Yanni was actually creating the project, um, there's different ways to share this. So you manage your projects here online and then there's possibility to generate and copy the link 
here, but you can also generate the embed code with an iframe for the websites. Uh, this works great if you would have like a project website uh, where there's different parties that you need need to have access and you can just simply create a project there with a link to uh, to have people view uh, the models there. And as you, you move along the process and change the design, you can always create new XR files um, and new to adjust the URL. So no need to change the link, but just change the XR file in the project. It's automatically updated. Um, these are the basic, basic strong features of Super in combination with Modeller. Um, we think it's really powerful, really easy to collaborate. Um, there's uh, a, a, a lot of easy access involved, uh, and many stakeholders. Uh, maybe. Um, Lawrence, yes. maybe you can share the link so everybody that is here in the yep. live webinar, they can join and experience Xuver themselves. Sure, uh, it will be no more than just a copy paste. Um, let me go here. Um, I'll drop it in the chat here and anyone can actually access there. Should be there. Uh, please use Chrome or Firefox uh, to uh, to access the link, it'll work best. And um, to move on, let me stop sharing my screen and get back to the presentation. If there's any questions, just uh, feel free to, to ask them uh, in the meantime. Maybe a bit about, I don't see the question here, so maybe I just ask you to explain a bit uh, more about this uh, privacy and making files protected and so on. So, because we know that sometimes if there is, for example, urban design competition or sometimes urban designs need to stay confident for specific period of time. Yes. And I believe this way, it's something quite easy to make it accessible to the people that that uh, would uh, find it useful and have the the privilege or the rights to access it but also to protect it from those that should not see it yes maybe if yes. you can enlighten a bit uh, this part of sewer on the security part um yes i can uh, i can there's a possibility to set your security settings within sewer uh, I can share the screen and actually show that real quick. Um, so we have notifications here. As you can see that um, people can access your model. So I have a model here with modern houses with interior. And if people actually register as a visitor, you will be able to see who has access. Uh, I can also determine the privacy settings on my uh, models. Um, for example, here I can edit the model that we use together and set my privacy settings to private. And now our public URL that you shared with me would be instantly uh, uh, locked down for public use. The only way you can now have access is just simply ha uh, register as a visitor and I would have to grant you personal access to see this model, which is a great way to do um, projects and share projects that are not necessarily for everyone's eyes. And you wanna reach for some confidentiality and make sure that uh, it's the security is really taken care of. Uh, and it's the same like if, if a link starts to spread around for some reason, uh, maybe it's been shared in a webinar like this, uh, all we need to do is just uh, take down the project or uh, redo the security settings. And I can also just use the same XR file in a new, mo a new project, delete the old one, and the link is gone. Now, this is a great way to actually manage all the access to the models um, and definitely beneficial for a uh, larger project uh, mm -hmm. or a small project with, uh, that, that has some specific use. Um, 
Is there uh, are there yeah. any other questions? There, there is a question. Please switch over to to the presentation, and I will read you the question, which yeah. is that does sewer require a fa fast broadband? What is the minimum requirement for the connection? Well, actually, um, there there's not really a minimum requirement for the broadband. The way it works is as I am opening this model, for example, what you see here, it starts to load. Well, the loading time depends on the broadband, but the thing is it puts, it fills up the cache of the browser. So uh, it can take longer, but as soon as, it, as soon as it's loaded, you will have access and your performance will be like this. Uh, Silver does require some sort of, uh, a little bit of GP, uh, GPU power. So we offload uh, on a computer. So uh, you would need to have some sort of uh, graphic support on your hardware. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So um, I see some uh, some <laughs> some great collaborations sparking here. <laughs> uh, very very nice reactions in the chat here. Um, what what maybe it's good to just move on to the presentation and sum up a, a few of the benefits that we see here. Um, I go back to my slides. So if you see the summary of the benefits, uh, I just summed them up very easily. Uh, you can create an urban design uh, with modeler, as you already saying, like five times faster. Um, maybe it's good for you to, to just confirm that a little bit on, on, on what the experience of your customers is, Yerni. Yeah, so this is the feedback that we we got from from two sides so one is the scientific research that i've done during my phd and where we actually tested model rule at the very early stage at that time it was two to three times faster but now customers since 2017 when is the year when we started commercializing modeler since then we got the confirmations from customers that at least at this very early stage of urban design for which the modeler is a, a great fit they are able to work uh, three to five times faster which usually the the amount of tiny time that they are able to save is not just to make the project to finish it faster, but to create more iterations. This is how usually they use the benefit of saving the time. Um, yeah, this, this, this is about the, the speed. And the in addition to it, what the key value proposition is, is the control over the design. Because the now that they have the mod modeler at their hands, they always know where they are with the numbers, which is important both in terms of the city regulations, as we have seen uh, on one side, and then on the other side, it's the wishes of their clients because they always need to reach the FAR and the gross floor areas that are demanded by, by their customers. And having this uh, um, on the fly calculation enables them to actually focus more on the quality of the design and yeah. have the numbers there uh, being calculated as a side product. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, what, what we also see is that um, what, when people are experiencing these designs, obviously you can do a lot within SketchUp itself, but it always feels different when you use a personal avatar and do a walkthrough. Uh, it works different than a camera. It works different than an animation. Uh, it's just a, the total feel for the experience and, and the, the feel for the area uh, really uh, differentiates. And then to have the online access to the data instantly uh, is a very strong strong benefit for, for easy access. Um, another thing that we see uh, as we uh, with Suver, we also have a lot of architectural customers um, it's mainly used to really take noise out of communication. So if there's multiple people working on a project, it's always easy to just simply point out a object and then talk about it, then to explain what you're talking about. And that really prevents wrong assumptions and it, it makes the process just run a lot smoother. And, I, and then you can manage the versions changing the XR files really quickly. Uh, I see another question coming in, um, whether there will be lighting settings. 
Um, there are actually. Uh, so uh, let me jump into the editor and I'll quickly share my screen to explain it. Uh, we didn't really zoom into this as it's uh, used less within, um, within the urban design, but um, I'll move here to our editor. So when you upload your file, you get access to the editor and within the editor, you can ch change a few things. We can set the starting point for the avatar. We can also adjust the light settings, the material settings. So this is used a lot within residential designs. So I can change the intensity of the sun with a lot of light or a little light. I can change the horizontal angles, but I can also change the vertical angles. And then there's global illumination, which doesn't do a lot within this SketchUp model. Uh, and color saturation. So if you want to do black or white, or you want to go vivid colors, you can do whatever you want and feel comfortable with. Um, the material settings can be useful every now and then to do a quick uh, idea on the collaboration. It's a simple right click on the object and I can change the opacity for maybe you forgot to uh, delete a, a volume that, that you wanted to use. Um, and we can do a bit of reflection and roughness and metalness. Um, there's bump mappings for certain materials. Uh, you can add the environment here with a 360 image that we have available in the library, but also diffuse the color to highlight one thing that you want to have special attention to. Um, this is all done afterwards. As soon as you save it, it's available on the URL and no need to put in any extra effort. Um, so I think that's, that should answer the question that uh, Julio Carrillo uh, asked here. Um, maybe there are any further questions. Uh, I think now is the time to, to really uh, put them into the chat. And otherwise, uh, we, we did kind of get through everything we, uh, we wanted to talk about. And then we move on to our next steps and how you can actually use our special offer. Um, I do not yet see any further questions uh, dropping into the chat. Um, Yane, is there anything you want to add to this uh, at the moment? No, at the moment, please just share the screen back so that people can see uh, email addresses to which they sh sh should send the yes. emails with requests for, for the yes. special offers. Uh, here we go. So. And it should come up here in a second. I'll switch to our special offer. Uh, here we go. So we uh, we have a special offer available. Um, we have what we what we will do for all the uh, attendees of this webinar is you will receive an email. With uh, a where you can respond to uh, info at silver.com or info at medallar.com and uh, place your request to get the special converter. And you will also receive then a discount code and for uh, a very nice discount uh, based on server and get a nice total package available. And the action will be active until the end of October. So I would strongly urge everyone to uh, give it a go and reply to that email. And um, I guess that's uh, all that we have for now. Um, I want to thank Yanni for joining us today in, uh, in our webinar. And uh, we'll definitely keep you posted on uh, the next webinar. We'll try uh, to do this on a monthly basis. So definitely keep an eye out for the next one. Um, it's always going to be around how to combine server into your process. Um, in this case, it was Modeller. I think we have a great solution here. Uh, the team of Modeller supporting it. And um, yeah, very curious on uh, about you guys' response. And uh, let's... Uh, Wrap it up for here. Thank you so much. And, uh, Maybe, Lawrence, I believe there are two short questions that you can just answer okay. before we finish. Yeah. 
it's a cross section presentation option is there something that you can set like how the cross section looks like or is it just cross sected and uh, that's it um i uh, can you explain the question i i assume the question would be if we are cross secting the solid volume can it fill it up i guess this is the the question if can you fill it up now yeah. you, uh, you can decide on what the angle should be like of mm -hmm. the actually uh, the actual section but okay. it's not that it's going to fill up the volume so it okay. will cross the section if okay. it the server works like this if it hasn't been modeled it will not be shown mm -hmm. okay and then the second question i see the last one let's let's finish with this one yeah. is uh, is it possible to to save the video of a walkthrough in xuver um no you cannot save the video of the walkthrough uh what we do see is that a lot of our customers actually use some sort of recording uh program mm -hmm. uh that they use for different purposes just use a, a basic screen recorder mm -hmm. and uh, combine that with super so it's not fully integrated okay uh, this was it for now. If there's any further questions afterwards, or you may think of anything, uh, don't hesitate to reach out uh, uh, at the email addresses that are uh, displayed here in the screen. For now, I want to thank you all and um, see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.